So yesterday, um, <clears throat> the SPY did get back up to the all-time high. Here, right here. A little bit now. So most of the action again was in the small caps in the IWM. We're continuing to see when money goes to work there, it creates that size moves. We've already talked about <clears throat> much lower liquidity on that side of the side of the equation. Um, <clears throat> but directionally still the same. Spies right below the all-time high here. Um, 221.70, 221.80. If we break above that, we can start to hold. Um, we want to make a long play similar to when I WM started to break out yesterday. Uh, looking at resistance here, it's a little bit messy. Uh, it's 220.40 to 220.50, um, which is right below yesterday's low. 2070. So IWM, um, after selling off right on the open, which we've seen that do a number of times. This day did that on the open. Um, obviously this day here. Uh, we've seen some quick dropouts on opens. Um, but this one reversed, got back up to the opening price, and then once it took out that opening price and started to go up, that's that's when I actually got long. <clears throat> Went up another dollar from there before pulling in about 40 cents. So for today, <clears throat> uh, certainly 134 would be the natural spot to look for if it drops out right on the open, at 85 cents below yesterday's high. So top out here about 2.45 p.m. Came in, tested the half, and the after hours it drifted down a little bit to this level right here. <clears throat> and these are the two levels to watch right in the open. Um, then obviously our all-time high up here in the 80s. All right, so a couple of things in play this morning, no pun intended. The first one is play Dave and Buster's. Uh, it's up six dollars. So here's the daily chart on it. All right. So they IPO'd back here in uh, 2014. Had a pretty nice run, and then. That's a pretty crazy act, not crazy, but very wide consolidation since then. So July of 2015, tried to break out here about a year later, drifted back inside of this consolidation. Let's see how long this has been. So June, so six months, six months of time really spent in the low 40s to the high 40s. Uh, should be enough time for it to at this breakout hold. If we look at the last time it broke out um, here in June, it had good follow through that day. It gapped up from 42 to um, 44. Only about a two and a half point gap today. It's gapping up six dollars. And then the next day it popped out at 47. Well, this was about five dollars in two days. Top that a little bit higher the next few days before coming in. So it's a, it is a very large gap. Um, the reason it's gapping up so much is they they crushed their EPS. Now you look at the numbers and there's a slight beat on revenue, but a crush of EPS. Um, and so what are you to think of that? Well, one way of looking at it is they they really started to monetize their assets more. Um, you know they're growing. And I think the es the estimates were low. Last year they did 11 cents. This year the estimates were 13 cents. I think they ended up being 23. The estimates are low because a lot of times when you're growing as a franchise, um, the the um, the money goes to that growth. It doesn't go to the bottom line. But they've been able to to grow and get that money to go to the bottom line. And so that's that that's actually a big deal. Really, the question is. Is that enough of a big deal to um, 
to hold this gap here above 53. It's, it's very different than something like CRM from a few weeks ago where they had this big gap up and you looked at the numbers and you're like, there's kind of nothing here. This is a great company and there wasn't anything impressive and we know what happened with that CRM and ended up coming off $12 over the next couple of weeks before bouncing. Um, that's not clear here. So um, what I'll do is I'll watch very closely. Does it fail? And if we mark it here at 54, what does it do in this area here? If it fails at 53, start to hold below, then I'll start to look for it to, to come in. Not the gap fill necessarily, but um, the numbers are quite good. But perhaps come in a couple of dollars, two, three dollars from there. Not look, wouldn't really look for it to come back down on the on the gap fill. Um, so that is that. Um, something at an all-time high, gapping up on good numbers, we always wait. And if it is consolidating near the highs after 10 o'clock, uh, we look for a second leg to the upside if it breaks. Uh, WDC had an analyst day, a lot of raised price targets. Um, this is one we tried to buy earlier this year when it was coming off. One of these down moves here. Um, has been very strong the last couple months. And now they just raise guidance again. So it's gapping up to about here. It's gapping 67 in change. So normally trades about four and a half million shares. Could easily see seven to ten million shares today if people really pile in. Some idiot has a hundred dollar price target. I shouldn't say that, but they had a ninety eight price target on it already, um, and they raised that by two dollars on the, the analyst day. So it does seem like it's set up potentially to test the seventy to seventy two area. Um, it holds this gap. Blue, this is one from last week. They gapped to 75 to sold that long term resistance. Um, <clears throat> it was accumulated then in the next few days. Accelerated yesterday when it got above 75 here. Actually came back in and retested it. And then had a second leg here, almost 80. Um, they did a spot secondary at 76. It's pretty bullish the fact that the stock just ran all up as much as it did and they can price the secondary at 76. We've seen on some other secondaries. In the last couple of months, after a run up, they were pricing secondaries way down here and the, and the stocks got crushed. The fact that you can price a secondary at a high price after a run up is bullish. So, 76 is the obvious price. Um, but certainly, if they had a wish down into this, you know, closer to 75 right on the open, it would be worth, worth a shot there to see, try to capture a move back up to the 78 resistance from yesterday. Um, and then Bob points out VRA. There's a couple of stocks that are very thin that are in play. VRA normally does um, 220,000 shares. So you certainly can take a look at it. Um, the heaviest volume day it's ever done is around 1.5 million shares. So it is in play. Um, it probably trades in 5 cent spread increments, which is not the worst thing. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit thin, that's all. Uh, TXMD. So this one bottomed in the morning, looked like it might turn around, and around 11.30 it broke down, went down to low again, did test, then it was accumulated the rest of the day. And you can see Reddit into the close was, was bought, and then this morning is gapping higher. It's, but it's touched the 7 here a couple of times. So. It's not like it's running away from the seven, um, but we want to watch right on the open. Uh, does it stay above seven? And you know, we talked about this yesterday. Um, lower price stock, lower float, good, um, 
small biotech drug for something that people understand, wide condition, affects a large percentage of the population. We'll see if this can uh, actually work its way back up to $8. Uh, and then Teva had the spike right on the open and sold off at a second leg below 35 to 34.60. Um, double bottoms, but could not hold above 35 the rest of the day. Here's one spike above 35, here's another. Uh, it trades in Israel, so it was obviously trading higher there. Um, as we are getting closer to the open, it looks like this 35 is going to be in play again. This is one that has really been beaten down in the longer term. And so we just want to be mindful, even though it's in probably, if not the worst, one of the worst sectors in the marketplace right now, um, that it has bounce potential. So and you got to go all the way back to um, you got to go back to before the financial crisis when it was trading between you know this 30 and 35 area. Since then, it's you know, it's coming to 35 a couple times. It's a pretty good bounce here to 47. This obviously was a huge bounce. Um, this is an area where it has a history of bouncing from. Even if it just went back up to 37, 38 before failing, there's a there's some upside there. Yeah, I don't really have any thoughts on the UA, UAA. I, I can tell you that when they initially um, did the spinoff of the the, um, the Class C shares, um, the, the trading was very strange. Um, the Class C shares traded actually in par to the Class A, which probably was the largest edge trade of the year. I don't know if I ever discussed it, but you probably saw I had the two positions in my account, um, short uh, UA.C and long UA for a few days. Um, it turned out that that ended up being a 20% move with zero risk. I don't know if we'll see that type of edge in the next few years. It's a very rare thing. Um, but I would, I think it'll be difficult for um, traders to try to, to game that. The only thing I'll say is UA, which was UAC, and that was the one that I was short before. Um, Let's see if we can get the chart on e signal. I type in UAC, it should show up. Okay, so it's UAC now is UA. And this is, I mean, it was all the way back here when I was short at 46. Um, came off to 24. So the reason why they did this renaming of the stack is to um, try to narrow the spread between the two. I think the spread is around 20%, which is abnormal. As I told you, they were at par when I put on that trade. So I think more of a normal spread is 10%. So the thought would be that UA now might, let's see, it's up 75 cents this morning, and UAA, which is the regular, the old UA, which they now just renamed UAA, is only up 20 cents. So you can see it's narrowed 50 cents so far in the, in the pre-market, um, which is about 1.5%. Um, the idea is people will be dumb, I, mean, I don't want to say dumb enough, but people will buy UA because it's the simpler ticker now. <laughs> And um, that way it will catch up to UAA. I don't know if people will necessarily sell their UAA shares. They probably won't. So that's, that's the theory behind it. Um, certainly if UAA is acting strong. Um, again, it is a huge spread. So maybe it will go up another uh, dollar or two. Um, and that's, that's the idea there. Is money back to moving back to karma? I haven't really looked that closely at that, Ed. It's, um, No, no, IWM, no, IDB. So um, we were, remember we were about to re to test this this 240 from earlier in the year. We did after the election ran up, and it looks like now. I mean, initially after the election, it came back above 290. IDB, excuse me, yeah, IDB, IDB 290 short to 300 could be a good short yeah, for, for another year. Um, I would give the benefit of the doubt to the sellers on this one. Obviously, the specialty pharma helps a lot there. Um, so peak that, and so this is kind of the opposite. It looks like, you know, let's compare where's money rotating. Money's rotating here into the small caps, right? Here's the move from the election, 127. Now we're at 134. As always, be patient and good luck. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels? in those stocks are important and how we might go about attacking that stock.
That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.